Let's examine what the Bible says about speaking in tongues. First scripture popularly quoted is this, 1 Corinthians 14 2. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them, they utter mysteries by the Spirit. Because of this passage, a lot of these Pentecostal churches use it to claim that they are uttering mysteries by the Spirit and that no one understands them. The gift of tongues, it became the, the sort of focal point of the, the charismatic revival at the beginning of the 20th century. And, and still is the gift, it seems to me, that charismatics tend to be obsessed with. You know, if you haven't received the gift of tongues, then you haven't really been filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, I, th I think that's what, that's what launched the movement. I, I suppose if they'd come up with something else, that maybe that would have been it. But, but I actually think that's the easiest one to falsify in an ignorant environment. So when you've got Charles Fox Parham saying that Agnes Osmond stands up and is speaking in Chinese and nobody in the room knows Chinese, they're all, wow, look at this, you know, we're hearing Chinese and there's not a Chinese person in the building. Nobody knows that. It, it's an easy thing to falsify because it's nonsense. It's, it also is an easy thing to, uh, to sort of double falsify with a false interpretation because nobody knows what the person is saying. It's learned behavior. And if you listen to them, you, you, you know, they're, they're saying what they've heard from somebody else and it has a kind of staccato and it kind of works together. As one guy uh, that I heard many years ago said, it's as simple as saying, Bata Honda should have bought a Yamaha. You know? Right now, Hamanda Ata Ata Rata Teda Baka Sanda Ata Ambo Osa Kata Rite Eke Banda Ata Rike Didi Asha. I mean, it's it, it's a kind of. I don't know if you say that really fast. Bata Honda should have bought a Yamaha. You know, whoa, you know, that. It's, it's very easy to falsify. You, you, you can't falsify a miracle. You can't falsify anything as easily as you can falsify that and everybody can talk in gibberish. So I, I think that's what started the movement. And you do remember, Phil, that in the early uh, years of that movement, they attached the arrival of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer to that experience. Right. So that became the foundational kind of identifying mark of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And once that got embedded in the movement, it, it just it stuck. And again, it's easy to fabricate. It's, it's the people in crowds like this all stand up and, and speak that kind of gibberish and, and they get away with it because there's no way to measure the reality of it. Although there would be, that, this is, goes back to my comment about uh, Charismatics not wanting their miracles to be, and, and they're not subject to verification. Right. That gift of all gifts would be pretty easy if it were genuine. Well, that's why they had to change the definition of it. Right. They said at the beginning that it was Chinese and they were speaking language. Do you remember what Charles Fox Parham did? He started sending people to the mission field and said they don't need to learn language. And they all arrived in the mission field and uh, said, We're here and we, we can speak the language supernaturally. And of course the whole thing collapsed in a, in a massive embarrassing scam because they couldn't. That's a sad part of the story because some of those people who literally sold everything and went yep. to the mission field really believed because Parham had told them, yep. you know, you're speaking Chinese. They believed they would be able to do that when they got to the field. And, and now we know that, that what they say is not any language at all. And so now the shift has been made that this is not a language, this is a private prayer language. And they, they call it the tongues of angels, uh, twisting the interpretation of 1 Corinthians 13, the tongues of angels. And then they come back, and they've said this to me many times, um, you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit if you deny us this. 
I, I had a very interesting uh, experience. Uh, I, I was um, I was invited to uh, speak at a huge uh, event a few years back now, uh, held by charismatic men. They had a huge men's movement. It was started by a guy named Demas Shikarian. You remember, remember that name? Massive big men's movement. And they asked me to come and speak, and I was surprised, really surprised, because I had written Charismatics, Charismatic Chaos, and but somebody had told the leaders that I had gotten the baptism of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> that I had spoken in tongues. Somebody told the leaders, so they invited me to come thinking I was going to give my testimony. I didn't know they thought that. I thought they wanted the right view of tongues. <laughs> so I went, and I, 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 I would, Jay Letty was with me at the time, and I said, I can't believe they're letting me do this. The place was packed. And they're going to let me get up and tell the truth about tongues. I can't believe they're letting me do this. <laughs> so I got up, and I started into it. I opened the Word of God, and I, I got about ten minutes into this thing, and a guy grabbed me by the back of the coat and pulled me out of the podium and away from the microphone. And I said, well, I really wasn't through. And he said, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> and that's the only time I've literally been yanked out of a, a pulpit away from a microphone. It's um, a shame they didn't get a word of knowledge about your real position. No, right? yeah, that is right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and the, the sad part of it is I went to the moderator of the meeting afterwards and I said, you know, I just want to ask you one question. He got up and told everybody in the building to pray that I would receive the gift of tongues there on the spot, that the Spirit would overwhelm me with tongues. Of course, it didn't happen. But afterwards, I said to this guy, I said, could I ask you just a simple question? Um, what, this, is the, this is the coordinator and director of the whole meeting. I said, what is your confidence that you're going to be in heaven? Tell me, why do you think you're going to be in heaven? He said, well... Uh, you know, you don't know. There's this long staircase, and at the end, there's this guy at the door, and you hope he lets you in. My heart was grieved, and I explained to him the gospel. He was the head of the event. He had no clue what the gospel was. This is my fear for this movement, that there are just millions of people across the planet caught up in this who have no idea what the gospel is.